Well, Tim, it's very nice to see you again. I trust you're keeping well. I am very well, thanks, Rodney. How are you? Very good, thanks. Very good. So, Tim, you lead a working group focusing on uh, challenges in the world of value chain management and supply chain today. I'm curious to get your insights. What's going on in that world? A lot's going on. You'd expect me to say that, wouldn't you? But um, but we're busy in value chain management when things change. And, and broadly speaking, that's either when tax policy and tax rules around the world change, particularly when the US does anything, that, that usually causes a, a knock-on impact on, on supply chains around the world, um, or when the OECD does, does something, but also when businesses and business models change. Um, the the great thing at the moment, or the, the scary thing, I suppose, is that both are happening at the same time. So you, you know all about um, BEPS2, you know all about what's happening with US tax reform, what the EU, EU's got on its plate, the ESG agenda as well. So that's that's really kind of changing the foundations of how tax works. But businesses have been and are changing very, very fast and having to rethink their, their value chain models. And um, we we sort of focused this down on three particular themes that um, they were there before COVID hit, and particularly you know one of two of them were, were already on the top of people's agendas before COVID. But the pandemic has really really accelerated how businesses are having to respond to, to them. One of those is major disruption in physical supply chain. So after after decades of globalization, we're moving into this slightly more um, geopolitically tense uh, moment. Um, we're seeing shortened supply chains, shortened global supply chains for all sorts of reasons, ranging from, from ethics and the environment on the one hand to trade wars or things like Brexit. On the other hand, um, in, in the UK at the moment, we've got some empty shelves on our supermarkets. Um, we've got um, shortages of all sorts of building materials basically because there's a shortage of truck drivers um, over oh. here and of course the argument is well is that caused by Brexit is it caused by Covid is it caused by by something else it's probably a, a mixture but those are changing um, massively and of course multinationals are that they base their value chain models they base their their transfer pricing models on a particular understanding of how things move physically around the, the world that that's that's changing and so the value chains have to change the second one, which has been a, a trend for as long as I can remember, but was really starting to, to, to gather pace, is the digitization of the non-digital parts of, of the economy. But this is another one where COVID's really focused the mind. I mean, just to take to one example, we're talking on, on Zoom here. Um, I spend most of my day on, on Microsoft Teams and various other um, uh, video conference uh, systems. We only implemented Teams about a month before um, lockdown started. I don't know how we would have survived without it, but this is an example of a you know, tr traditional professional services firm that is using technology as a day-to-day -day way of, of delivering its, its advice day in, day, in, day out. Um, and we're seeing the rise of digital centres of excellence, of the new IP that even businesses such as um, you know, electronics or, uh, or, or pharmaceuticals that, that have a long history of, of, um, of R&D, uh, most of, or a lot of their new R&D is actually in software, it's in platforms, it's in, in um, technology. And um, that disrupts value change because it means that where you create value is different potentially from where you mm. used to create value and, and the value drivers underpinning your business are different. So the transfer pricing assumptions that you have in your business have to change as well. Um, the, the third one, um, and the one that really, really has been accelerated by this pandemic is the wish for organizations to hire and to move people um, wherever they, they want to, 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 to work and, and live. Um, that's both people wanting to um, work from not just home, but from an exotic home near the beach. Um, and there've been all sorts of uh, requests for, for that that a number of my clients have, have, have had. So one of our, the areas that our focus group is looking at is well, how do you deal with these sorts of requests by employees, but also this war for talent and, and the need to hire talent wherever you can find it, which means the old idea that you can get all of your leadership into one country in one office just doesn't really work anymore. A lot of the pushback 
to disperse leadership teams in the past was, well, it's difficult to work if you're not face to face. Well, the last 18 months has, has proved to us that you can work and you can create value when you're not face to face. You can do it over um, over the Internet. Um, and so I have a number of clients and, and the rest of our group have several clients who are really grappling with this and trying to come up with a way forward so that they can they can maintain some form of control over their tax and value chain model while allowing the business the flexibility that it's it's craving. So all of that, as you can imagine, is keeping us extremely busy at the moment. Absolutely. And those are three big trends all hitting at once. That that must be almost overwhelming for many organizations to grapple with all at once, I can only imagine. Uh, yeah, and often when, well, plus you, then you've got BEPS too, you've got tax reform all over the place, you've got countries raising taxes. I mean, the UK has been raising taxes like nobody's business for the last 12 months. It's all happening at the same time. And, and unlike sometimes in the past where there's a tendency to say, well, this is all a bit too much, let's wait until it settles down and then we'll rethink our, our model. You can't do that now because businesses are asking tax functions to act and to, to give them answers. And so they're having to, to come up with those answers. It's really interesting, Tim. And you mentioned the topic of tax reform and countries, including the UK, raising taxes, um, in part because of COVID last year. You also lead tax policy uh, in the UK firm. And I'm just curious, what challenges you're seeing in the world of policy today? Uh, the challenges that we're seeing in the, the world of policy, I think, come from the fact that um, the tax system that, that we know has grown up over, and, and this is the case across most rich countries, has grown up over uh, decades based on ad hoc pieces of tax legislation that, that getting introduced for a particular reason um, at the time and then never really get repealed or, or reformed. Um, meanwhile, the world moves on, and so actually sources of revenue for government start drying up because, because what used to happen is no longer paying them tax. So to take a couple of, a, a couple of relevant um, examples, the UK exchequer and plenty of other countries as well raise a large chunk of their tax revenue from the taxation of, of petroleum sales, essentially, either through upstream um, oil and gas extraction or actually more likely and, and, and a bigger chunk is from, from the, the pump at, at gas stations. Um, as we transition away from internal combustion engines, and that's happening very quickly, certainly in, in, in uh, the UK, that revenue dries up. How do you get um, replacement revenue without doing things that are going to put people off investing in, in clean technology, etc. So that's, you know, that's what, that's one example. Another one that's live in the UK at the moment is related to our aging population. We have a big shortfall in funding for social care for, for the elderly. Um, and this is something that governments have had to grapple with for, for years. Um, the government this month has finally proposed an increase in, in national insurance, which is our social security system here, in order to plug the gap. And it's on all the front pages of the newspapers, incredibly controversial, everyone's talking about it. So tax is really in the, the headlines at the moment, because I think there's a recognition that we need to raise revenue in order to pay for what we need as a country. We can't just cut our way out of things, or, and we can't grow our way out of things in the way maybe we could in, in the past. Um, so the government is consistently having to make judgments as to the least worst option, um, what unpopular policy it can put through without creating too much noise, essentially. And that's going to it's going to run and run, I think, both in the UK, the rest of Europe, and I'm sure in the rest of the world. That's really interesting, Tim. Gosh, I mean, it's a fascinating discussion. There's really almost a couple of big things hitting businesses all at once. There's the whole question of what's going on with supply chains, given the three themes you mentioned. Yeah, and then yeah. this policy dimension is really interesting as well, because you can see that as a fourth uh, train coming towards a business in very short order. So fascinating discussion terms. Absolutely. Well, no, very interesting to, uh, to talk with you about it. Well, uh, thank you for your time. And Stay healthy in, in these COVID times as hopefully we're getting towards the end of uh, the battle.